friend. She needs to know me from about five years old. And this is her first time. I'm going to bring her up on the stage. <laughs> but I wouldn't let this opportunity pass me to give God praise. Because some months ago, well, Alina has been living in the U.S. for many years. And some months ago, my cousin, who lives in New York as well, um, sent us a WhatsApp message to say, please pray for Alina. She's in the hospital, she's in a coma, it's not looking good, blah, blah, blah. And we all started praying. And um, uh, my sister, in particular, was very full of faith. And she said, listen, this is not Alina's time to go. And we need to pray. And this is for the glory of God. And we continued praying. But it looked like it was getting worse because the doctors called her mother, who is in Jamaica, and asked her if she could come up to New York. I was somewhere else, I don't remember, I was traveling. And I spoke to her, I was like, oh, Miss James, if I was there, I'll go with you. She said, me can't be on you, yeah, no, because you gave me a foot and whatever. She had her own health issues, and she said she couldn't go. And so Alina was there in the hospital for how long? I'm going to let, let you give your answer. I was in the hospital for almost three months. I was in the hospital for. And um, for most of that time, I wasn't And I'm just crying because I'm happy. I wasn't conscious. I was in a coma. And um, the doctor, um, I was not aware of it, but they say that you know there's nothing more they can do for me, and they just have to disconnect all of these umpteens of machines and let me go. And their prediction was that even if I regain consciousness, I would not be able to do anything for myself. I wouldn't be able to talk. I would be just there, like you make a bed and you do the bed, and you come back and the bed is there, and that would be my life. You know, but on the night when they came in, and I understand that I had bread drains and friends and gossip, and everyone was there praying for me that night. And I understand that when the doctor came in to disconnect all the machines, my friend, who is also a friend from Jamaica who lives there too, um, told the doctor that he can't touch me. And he was there to disconnect the machine, and she said, if you touch her, this hospital is going to be in so much trouble that you won't even understand. Walk away and leave her. And he walked away, and he left me, and she said, she felt the Holy Spirit came on her, and she didn't want to interrupt everybody else, because I think there were 20 patients in the room with me. And she went to the bathroom, and she prayed, and she came out, and when she came out, she touched me and said, they think that you are gone, but God isn't ready for you yet. He has so much more work for you. And you're not going to be a vegetable. You are going to work for the Lord. And here I am. I'm not a vegetable. I am not a vegetable. I had severe memory loss initially. I would have like a normal conversation like I'm talking with you. And five minutes after this conversation, I couldn't tell you one word that I say or you said to me. And that's how it was for a while. But the Lord has blessed me. And he has lifted me up so much that I think I was seeing like, every week I would see like probably eight or seven different doctors during the week because every part of my body, everybody was doing something. And the visit begins to get longer. It would be two weeks, then it would be one month, then it would be two months. And I just started getting better and better and better. I had like weakness for a while because when you lie down for such a long time and you don't move, but my friend, and I'm telling you how God is good. This friend lives in um, another part of New York and her husband was sick and her husband said to her you have to go to her because her mother isn't here and she needs someone to be with her every day. She left her sick husband 
call her daughter in Canada and say, you need to come over and take care of your father, because I'm going to New York, because Lena is in the hospital, and she needs someone there with her. And she was there like a nurse in the morning, until the night when her daughter leaves work, she would pick her up, and every day she would come and she'd say, they said you're not going to talk again, you are going to talk. You're going to show them. They say you're not going to walk again, you are going to walk. You are going to show them. And she would massage me and give me range of motion exercise so that, you know, I would be able to move and function and sit up by myself and walk by myself when I regain consciousness. And this is what the Lord has done. I'm here. And my father, who had seen me through all my sickness, has seen me for the first time in a while. She used to visit, but now she has become so sick and feeble that she doesn't want to travel. And she has seen me for the first time since I was sick. What was it? October, I think it was. So it's almost a year, and it was the day after Christmas that I became ill. I don't even know what happened. It was just a normal day for me. I got up, go to work, because it's not a holiday in the United States. It's a normal working day, so you get up, you go to work, and you're coming home. And the thing about it is that I work in Jersey, and you pass through Jersey, and you come to New York, to the city, Manhattan, and you take another train, and you come all the way to Queens, and you get off, and you take another thing to get you home. And with all of that journey traveling from Jersey to Queens, where I would take my last transport to get me home. I was, as far as I know, I was good. Because I asked people, was I stupid at work? Did I ask normal, did I, would I do all sorts of stupid things? And they said, no, you're just yourself. You know, and um, here I am. He took me from Jersey all the way to Queens. And where I felt ill, it was the second to last stop. I could stay at that station and look all the way up the street in the distance and see the stop that I was supposed to get off the train. And right, I don't know, I never stand on the train if I could sit. And that day I actually stood, went by the door, leaning against the rail, and as the train door was about to close, I fell. And half of my body was over the track, the other half was in the train. And I was in the first car, and people started to scream and bang on the train driver's door to open the door, open the door. And he opened the door, and they were able to pull me back in the trap because the space is very narrow. And if they hadn't done that, I probably would have been beheaded by all the different things that the train passes through because it's a very small, compressed area. What God was on my side that day. And not only that, when all of this was happening, he was making provision for me. Right across the street is a police station. And right across the street on the other side, a couple blocks down the road, is a, one of those very big hospitals. Very pushy, pushy hospital. But it was right down there, and they were able to get the police get the ambulance, and everyone was there within minutes helping me. And in all of this, I do nothing. It's like, I am here after I came out of the hospital. Because I woke up and I'm in the hospital, and a normal person would say, what am I doing here? It was like you're in your bedroom when you get up and you go to the bathroom, and you went back to bed. That was my reaction. I didn't ask anyone, what am I doing here? And the nurses, were in a panic. The one who was at the station was she was in a panic because I don't know if she came in to give me medication or what. And I wasn't there and she came and she turned down the door. Oh Mr. 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 open the door and I'm like, oh the minute are they oh <laughs> and I did what I was thinking oh. and she said to me, um what is it about you never know the bathroom makes up you never love the bathroom and I'm like Something wrong with her. I'm not a child on the border. I can go whenever I want to go to the bathroom. I don't have to ask permission. I had no idea that I'm a sick person and I'm not supposed to be out of bed unattended 
you try to warm together, press the button, someone help you. None of that. And I went back to bed and I'm like, these people have another guest coming. Is it 